Adam Marcou, for Jalori Lane. I'm president of the Nashua Teachers Union. Um, if we could have the podium at every meeting, this would be epic. Um, I don't usually have notes, but I was thinking about what to say on my way here. I've said a lot at the budget meetings already and full board meetings, so um, I will try to be brief, but we all know how that goes with me. Um, it's funny today, um, AFT, which is our parent union, has a thing called Share My Lesson, and it's free. It's free for you, it's free for me. Um, and they, today was day two of, or day three of their virtual um, conference. So they had webinars Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, free to members. You could do them live when they happen or um, on demand, which is nice because, you know, some of them started at 2 o'clock and most of our schools are still in session. Um, ironically, the one I took today was on trauma. Now, I have um, firsthand experience with trauma with my two sons, which most of you know that story. Um, so I can truly understand where Dr. Mosley is coming from um, in his story. Um, although they are not the same, they share similar qualities. Um, and that's free for you too. And I say that because sometimes I feel that we talk as educators and we live it every day and we say it one way that may not be clear because you're not with kids every day like we are. And I would offer to share that with you um, because I think it would help understand why we're asking or what we're going to ask for or suggest happen with the budget. Um, one of the board members a few weeks ago said that a lot of the things we were talking about and the issues that our students have um, should be dealt with outside of school. And to a degree, that's correct. They should be receiving counseling outside of school, support outside of school from a psychiatrist, psychologist, whatever. But they're not. In that webinar today, 50% of our kids nationwide have experienced some sort of trauma. Less than 1% are receiving services. So they come to school, they may or may not be diagnosed with some sort of trauma-induced problem, and they're not ready for school. Some of the hardest things to remember is it's not their fault. But what are we supposed to do with them? We, we do what we can in our classrooms, and then when we can't, we ask for help. But there isn't a lot of help right now. So what are we supposed to do? We need to educate these kids. They deserve an education. But also the other kids that watch some of these traumatic experiences for them happen in their classrooms um, need to be educated too. Students, whether you like it or not, cannot learn unless their needs are met. This is scientifically proven through research. I can share plenty of articles on that. There's this fun little pyramid that shows the progression. Oh, Dr. McKinney shared it with you before in committee when we were talking about data. Nothing that I have suggested, in my opinion, to add to the budget is a want. It's a need. We talked about... Um, in other board meetings of the budget, a list of wants versus needs. And, and that makes sense. Or I believe it was required versus not required. Something you understand, I believe, what I'm saying. Did you know paper is not required in a school district? The ED's rules explain very clearly what each public school needs to have and what they don't, and paper isn't one of them. But we all know we would not run a school district without paper. We wouldn't function. We should be moving digital, and we're getting there, but budget, right? It all comes back to the budget. So we often talk about teaching our kids to advocate for themselves. You got 25, 30 kids. You don't always know that Johnny doesn't get it right away. So we need them to ask for help. Our job as educators is to advocate for our kids. That's why we're here. That's why emails got sent. That's why I'm such a thorn in your side. 
Not only am I advocating for my own three little kids, but there's 11,000 students and their 1,000 teachers and their 423 paras and the 73 secretaries and the 101 food service workers that we advocate for. I get the budget. Not as great as a lot of people here. Not as good as Dan in City Hall. Um, but I've sat through enough of these to understand where the money is and where it needs to go and that we don't have a money tree at City Hall. But my job is to advocate regardless of what the percent increase is supposed to be. And I'm advocating for more. I'm, I'm, I don't... I live in reality, so I understand that 2.25, maybe 2.43 is where we'll get. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to show up at the Board of Aldermen meeting and say, these are our needs, and this is what we need to be working on, and why we need to do that. Maybe I've done a poor job educating the public because I'm engrossed in it, and I just assume everyone knows what we deal with and what we need help with. So we're going to educate the public. And I know that we're probably going to hear about how low test scores are, and we haven't seen this, and we don't see that, and you only work six months of the year and have the summers off. There, I said it. None of, no one else has to say it now. Um, well, I know you're going to say it, because that's not a surprise. I just... Things have changed in our school district beyond our control. And we need your help to address some of those changes. Thank you.